Hi, what's up everyone and welcome back to another video and today we're here with the ultimate guide to saving power when you're on the go with your laptop PC. Now today we're covering just about everything you may want to consider when you're going ahead and actually trying to save power from things like hardware to software and things you should do with those particular bits of hardware and software. We're going to benchmark it, we're going to show you a bunch of numbers. This is the ultimate guide to saving power with your PC. Now a lot of these things we'll talk about here today. We'll be able to transfer over to the Mac side and even the Linux side but if you want to see dedicated videos let me know down in that comment sections. Now also too at the start of this video you would have seen that little intro with a little menu there and also too if you check that description box not only will there be a menu down there but also to everything that I talk about from the PC we'll be using here today, the software we're using to test with, some settings and basically everything that I mentioned throughout this video. Everything is down in the description box. So if you specifically want to jump to a certain section check those timestamps and you'll be ready to go ahead and watch those specific sections. Again we're really covering just about everything from hardware to software bits and pieces, everything you want to know, so it is a really in-depth guide. And again, most of it can be put over to the Mac and Linux site. Now the settings and the things that I've been doing here, I've been testing for the last four years, and I have to say, they are some of the best settings and best things you can do to save power out and about. So let's go ahead and jump into today's setup. So for today's testing, we'll be using a Dell XPS 15 9550. I picked this guy up and it runs a i7 4 core 8 thread CPU, features a GPU which most of the time will be disabled if you are going to be going ahead and running it in a battery mode, and also too, whilst it isn't the world's most cutting edge system, it is still running a 4K screen which is very power hungry, being a touch screen as well. It delivers good performance, it has a large battery and most importantly, runs Windows 10. Now this is important because a lot of people these days are running Windows 10 with the September update I may add and Windows 10 has a tendency to run silly background tasks so it's really good to see what we're going to be going ahead and seeing here. Again this computer strikes a really good middle ground. The 4K screen and touchscreen represents some of your high end features and being a fairly decent and well put together machine it is something that a lot of people may want to consider. Not to mention this laptop's also too fitted with an 85 watt hour battery which is some of the biggest batteries you can get on the market which isn't too bad. Now the battery itself is just about brand new as I recently had it replaced in the Dell Recall program and it has less than 50 charge cycles on it. And for power monitoring, I didn't just use the standard Windows bar, we used Battery Bar 3.6.6 with the ability to go ahead and see exactly how many milliwatts are coming out of the battery at any given time. Now when actually running my tests, I went ahead and made sure it was fully charged up to 100%, left it on the charger for 10 minutes, took it off the charger to run my test and then put it back on the charger to fill it back up to 100%. Now I use battery bar rather than an actual physical power meter that you plug in to save the charger because it allows me to go into very detailed readouts as to what is exactly going on with the battery. If I was just to plug in a straight adapter to the wall and then tell me how much it's using, sure it'll give me a reading but usually they're only measured in watts rather than milliwatts which is what we want to see because milliwatts is more detailed. So sure you could go ahead and do the same with the power bar here but we're just going to be using a software power package which will allow us to see everything that's going on with the battery, how much we're using and what is going down. So that's what we're going to be using here today. So enough talking about what we're going to be using and what we're going to be testing, let's go ahead and get into some of the hardware stuff. Now, in terms of hardware, there's a lot of things you can actually do to save power, but the first and most obvious one is the keyboard brightness. If you've ever looked down at your keyboard and you've seen those bright lights shining back up at you, if you do have backlit keyboards, chances are you may be wondering how much power is that actually using? And the answer is actually quite a bit. With the number of LEDs on the XPS 15 keyboard, today we're going to be taking a look right here and taking a look at our estimated runtime with the LEDs on, we see we get about 6 hours and 1 minutes of runtime which actually isn't too bad with the uh, keyboard brightness set to full brightness. However, if we turn off those LEDs and simply just having no keyboard backlighting, we get now 6 hours and 39 minutes. Having a 10% saving or around 37 minutes of power saving, we get an absolutely awesome increase in battery life here. This is actually enough power saving that you could notice the difference in day to day usage. 
damage simply by just turning off the keyboard backlighting. So that's generally the first thing that I'll do in terms of a hardware power saving technique. The other most obvious one is also to dimming the display. I mean, turning down the screen brightness is a pretty obvious one. And especially in the 4K touchscreen model that we have right here in our XPS 15, it absolutely chews through battery really, really fast. So for example, when we set the brightness to 100% at idle, the computer will use 25 watts of electricity, which will give us an estimated runtime of around 3.4 hours of runtime. Whereas if we dim the display to just 50%, we see a five watt saving, which can be extending our batch life to 4.25 hours. And then if we drop it back to say 25% brightness, we see some even bigger savings. And it's absolutely awesome to see that simply just dimming the display to something that's still usable, but isn't super bright, is still able to save us so much power. That 50% saving, whilst it may only be a five watt saving, uh, is still actually five watts. And that's gonna add up over time and could mean the difference between you getting that work done or not getting that work done. So it's something that you may wanna consider there. For instance, if we go to the very lowest setting, the XPS 15 uses only 19.25 watts with an estimated runtime of 4.3 hours. And taking a look at this graph right here, we see that there is a major difference between very low brightness to 100% maximum brightness. And hey, we could even get up to seven hours of runtime with the uh, keyboard dimmed and also to the display dimmed as well. So that's some pretty good runtimes if we were to turn off all of that. Then finally, when it comes to hardware saving, there's also two things like core disabling. Now, the idea of disabling your CPU cores to save power has been an argument literally since the introduction of multi-core processors. If I've got four cores, if I turn off three of them, I should be saving all that power, but that in theory makes sense. However, if you also to think about it, the workload that had been spread across all four cores now is gonna be put onto one core. That one core is gonna be working harder, using more power, so you may not be seeing as much of a saving. But going ahead and take a look at our numbers right here. If we only allow one core to be running, we get a 17.99 uh, watt rating versus the 53 watt maximum usage of all cores enabled when this thing's under load. However, with that being said, doing this will actually cause your system to slow right down and be an almost unusable experience. It really sucks to have one core, two threads, and it just doesn't really run that great. You may be saving a bit of power here, but you'll be ripping your hair out instead while you wait for things to load. I mean, it took two minutes to load up Google Chrome to save my numbers out. So that was a bit of a problem when it was only two cores. Another problem with this type of technique is the fact that it is really hard to switch between different modes. For example, if you're out and about, maybe you're taking computer class and you disable all but one core and then you wanna come home and play some games, now you actually have to restart the computer to enable all those other cores where there's other software techniques, which we'll touch on in just a moment, that will allow you to enable, disable, do whatever you want, all within Windows to allow you to save power, but not cause you a massive headache like what you may be expecting out of disabling and enabling cores. Then the final thing we do need to consider when disabling cores is power states. A lot of modern processors these days, well, really anything from third generation, heck, even third generation themselves, all support low power state modes, which means when all the cores are enabled and all the workload is very, very low, they're gonna use a lot less power. So for example, if you have four cores all sharing the work across all of them and the work's very, very light, maybe only one or two things that it needs to do, it can go ahead and share that across all the cores and hit low power state. So it's using a lot less power. However, if we disable three of those four cores, leave only one running, instead of that same processor running at a really low amount of power, it's now gonna be using max speed, maximum boost. It is gonna be using a whole lot more power than if we just allowed all of them to run. So that is definitely something you want to consider that maybe disabling cores might not necessarily be the best thing from a usability standpoint, but also to a practical standpoint. So with hardware done, let's take a look at the software package. And as we were just talking about before, disabling cores on a CPU might be good enough for some people. However, there's a lot better way to do it. And that is with software. Now, we're not necessarily disabling the CPU, rather we're limiting the utilization that the CPU can be used. So essentially, rather than allowing the computer to run 100% maxed out, we can limit it down to save power, keep it in those low power states, and overall have a much more usable experience and the ability to switch between whatever power modes we need within a click of a button. So for example, if you're out of school, 
put it on low power saving mode, get home, put it into max mode and go ahead and play your games. It is really, really simple. No restarts are required. So simply jump into the power menu and we can go ahead and find this menu right here to limit the CPU usage. For example, if we go ahead and limit it to just 50% usage, we see we actually get quite a bit of power saving. When we max out all the cores, we see about a 43 watt power decrease from when all cores are loaded and maxed up on our particular unit right here. And the more we disable, the more savings we do get right here. And the best part about all this is because it's all done through software, it's really easy to manage and really, really linear. If you want to do 51% or 62% or 77%, you could easily just dial in how many percentages you want and boom, you're saving power and it is a really awesome way to do this. Not to mention, all the cores are still able to be used so you can easily spread jobs across all four cores and all four cores can hit their low power states, keeping you saving power but also to still having some performance here. Now in terms of software, there's also two power saver mode, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. You just go down to the taskbar, hit power saver mode, and boom, you're pretty much ready to go. And that is definitely something you should always do if you're trying to save power. For instance, Windows 10 will do a whole bunch of indexing, drive background rubbish that really just uses up a whole bunch of power and putting in power saver mode puts these tasks on hold. Now you do note these things are on hold, meaning at some point after a while they will run. So when you do put yourself on power saver mode, we'll touch on this more in just a moment, make sure once a week, once a month, whenever, plug the computer in, put it on high performance mode, open up task manager and just don't touch the computer. What you'll notice is the CPU usage will pin up to 100% and the computer will just be doing stuff in the background. Basically what you're doing here is allowing the computer to index and do all its little background bits and pieces so it won't want to do that when you're out and about on battery. Now Microsoft claims that this helps with user experiences and blah 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 but honestly it uses up CPU time, it uses up battery when you are on battery so it really is something you don't want to do. Then finally another common software thing that people like to do is disable Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Now many people do it and they think that they're saving power by disabling the Wi-Fi or disabling the Bluetooth. Whereas in actual reality, that's not exactly the case. The actual hardware that runs Bluetooth can be put down to something like a smartwatch and that thing uses just about no power. So the actual chipset running the Wi-Fi and also to the uh, Bluetooth modules don't use a whole lot of power. Where you're saving the power is actually through software. So when you disable all those Wi-Fi chipsets or the Bluetooth chipsets, the PC doesn't have to go searching for wireless networks, it doesn't have to broadcast Bluetooth signals, and more importantly, all the background processes that are related to networking don't have to run, saving CPU cycles and thus saving power. Windows doesn't need to download background updates because, hey, it can't download anything because there's no internet connection, and overall the actual usage of the computer may go down a little bit because there's no network connectivity, it doesn't have to do anything extra that it may not necessarily need to do. So sure, disabling Wi-Fi may not actually be the actual thing that saves you power, but the software package is where you are saving power. And another great thing of saving power here is you're not really going to be browsing the internet because you don't have internet connection so you're less likely to spend a whole bunch of time browsing internet which can use up a whole bunch of power. So okay then, we've touched on software and we've touched on hardware, what should I do to save power on my computer? What are the golden settings? What are the boxes I need to tick? We'll go ahead and let's do this. So for the past four years, I've run just about these settings and I've found them to get me the best battery life. So the first thing that I go ahead and do is set screen brightness to anywhere from 40 to 45% as it allows me to see the screen perfectly fine. However, it doesn't use a whole bunch of power and doesn't strain your eyes. Different computers will have a different setting right here. So you may need to go up to say 50% brightness, but keep it under or around that 40 to 45% rating. After I've done that, I've gone ahead and limited the CPU to just 50% use as I can still do everything that I want to do when I'm out and about without the computer maxing out to 100% so I do save a fair bit of power here by just limiting the CPU usage and also too I do leave Wi-Fi on but Bluetooth turned off I run it in power saver mode and also too I have my keyboard backlight off all in all, I get some really decent battery life. And I can get around five to six hours actually in real world tests. Now you may be thinking, hang on a second, those numbers you were saying earlier, you were saying like seven hours, six hours, what happened to that? Well, in reality, you don't get those kind of numbers, unfortunately. These are just synthetic numbers if the computer's using five watt hours, if we times five watt hours by how many watt hours we have in the battery, obviously that's what we're gonna get. But when it comes to the real world, different programs will randomly spike up and use more power and drop down and other things will happen. And 
in reality, you're not going to be getting the same amount as what you would get in theory. However, these settings right here, generally speaking, get me the most battery life out of a 4K 15 inch dual graphics monster with an i7 CPU. It is actually really, really usable. Though with that being said, every Friday night, I go ahead and plug the PC into power, open up Task Manager, set it to high performance mode, and just leave the computer to sit there. And what I will notice is the CPU will just spike up to 100% for no particular reason until you actually look into what it's doing. So every Friday night, it will do a virus scan, index the drive, and also to do any little minor optimizations in the background and any Windows updates that may be required. So it can easily go ahead and save a whole bunch of power when it's on battery because it doesn't need to do all these things because I let it happen on Friday. So conclusion time of the video. Having the right settings, both hardware and software, is the key to getting the most out of your system's hardware. Do note that every system is different and also too there's other things that we didn't touch on here today like making sure your computer's clean or not using your computer on a soft surface that will be stopping air intake for fans. Those are kind of other more common knowledge type of things but it's definitely something you may want to look into. There's also two things like the actual life of your battery. If you've got a laptop that's say two or three years old, you may be running into the issue where you can't exactly get a whole bunch of runtime out of it simply because the battery is absolutely shot. Today we use just about a brand new battery but all in all that is what you're going to be expecting out of a new computer but you can also to expect some decent savings out of an old one as well whether you're running a super thin and light pc or a massive 4k monster some simple settings here and tweaks can get you some decent battery life out of just about any laptop on the market again i do want to say that every computer is different so you might find yourself a little bit different here maybe a few settings tweaked here and there and with that being said do let me know what you do to save power down in that comment sections. While you're down there, you can also do check that description box because I've also do done a bunch of other videos touching on in more detail everything that we covered here today. So if you want to know more about how Power Saver affects your computer, or if you want to know more about how disabling CPU cores can affect your computer, you can find those videos linked in that description box. Again, with other products and stuff like that that we did talk about here today. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you next time for another video. Thank <laughs> you.